Oh, this is going to be fun. His nose couldn't stop writing. It's been bleeding everywhere. Good afternoon. How is everybody? Thank you for joining us, the, the few people who have straggling in and out. It's good to see everyone <laughs> enjoying a day full of content here at Grit Daily and Lively. So thanks to them for allowing us to come out. My name is Ted Baker. Um, I have the honor and the privilege to uh, share the stage today with a squeaking, something squeaking in the background. Um, we're super excited to share with you guys today uh, and share the stage with a Mr. Clayton Thomas, who I refer to as the Clayton Thomas, and one of the uh, more memorable entrepreneurs that you may ever meet. And <laughs> to my right, I have Dr. Christina Rahm, who is most definitely one of the memorable, most memorable entrepreneur, scientist, extraordinaires that you will ever meet. So um, let's first talk about what you two are, what you do, and how you are affiliated with one another. Who would like to start? You go first. Okay. Um, so I'm a, um, a scientist, a business partner of both of you guys. <laughs> there it is. And I'm a mother of four, an artist, uh, but I've spent my life trying to really work with the environment and people and animals to make the world a better place. And um, I get to work with you guys at the Root Brands and DRC Ventures to biohack and to really, I don't even know if I want to use that word, but really help the world again heal and be a better place through natural. I try to do as many natural things as possible, but I used to be in pharmaceutical biotech, um, worked in 89 countries and this has definitely been the best thing I've done in my career and the funnest thing I've done. And I want to say this to everyone out there, you know, the inside of your body is so important and your cells have to have positive energy and be exposed to natural things that support the inside of your body. But outside from a business and personal perspective, you have to have the right people around you. And I definitely, with these two and the rest of the root environment, have positive people around me. I think we should stop for a second and say that she just said two things that are, that, that are huge. is the funnest, which yep. clearly you're involved, so that would be... Well, you're both born on the same birthday, that so... That would be that. <laughs> Which was yesterday. Which was yesterday. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. But We're you said something else. You said it was one of the most impactful things that you've, you've ever done. And I think considering your background with um, pharmaceuticals and governments around the world, uh, your studies of human monoclonal antibodies and all of these things and cloning cloning, cloning. <laughs> so and to say that what we're doing right now is one of the most impactful things you've ever done um sorry one more sec clay before we get to you the, talk a little bit about that because i think that people don't recognize the actual impact of what you've been this this mission that you've been on lately yeah. and um that's a pretty big statement yeah so um you know Working with the top biotech and pharma um, companies in the world and working with some of the top leaders in our world, um, you guys know because you're working alongside with me, but I traveled um, throughout my adult life to work on pharmaceuticals, biotech, military, government projects, but I was not um, in the exact right projects for me, but I learned a lot, so I learned you know, failure. I also learned um, how to navigate those situations, and now... I get to do the, my favorite thing in life, and that's working with the environment, people, and animals to clean the world up, to speak the honest truth. Um, I try to do that strategically, as you know. But I get to work with the right men and women. And throughout my career, I had a lot of men and women not support who I think God wanted me to be. You know, we each have this mission. And at the Root Brands of DRC Ventures, we have such a great group of people and networks, the ambassadors, the business people we work with throughout the world who just energized me and allowed me to create solutions that I feel like the world does not have. So I have to say this, you go through life and you go through some really tough things and then you come out of it if you're lucky and if you pray enough <laughs> and meditate enough, you come out of it a better person. So I think all the failure led me to working with you guys and the rest of the community so that we can provide scientific solutions that are no one has actually being able to provide something naturally that does not have synthetics that's able to heal your body and to work with men and women 
who support that and empower that is probably one of the biggest gifts I've been given in my life, and that's where we all are right now. So it's been a, a major gift for me that we're able to do this and really impact our world in a, in a, to make it a better place. She, she failed um, to work with us, and we had to succeed to work with her. <laughs> <laughs> I outkicked my coverage. <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think is one of the most impactful things that you guys are doing right now in, in I'll call it empowering people to take back their health, that um, maybe isn't common knowledge that, that she's kind of created and how you're taking your marketing brain and your... Um, I think you're a savant in your own nature, the way that you think about things. I'm just special needs. Uh, what, we'll call it what you <laughs> like, but it is special. I'll tell you that much. So what is one of the most impactful things that you know, is happening right now with some of the creations that she's put out there? And how is that going to impact not only, um, I'll say, global health, but you know, also commerce? Well, I, it, it's interesting because... Conceptually, in the, in the marketing space, the term biohacking has become really popular. And if you, if you understand what the human body is, we're the most complex computer that's ever been made. We are the quantum computer. We're the, we are the spiritual entity that is modeled after uh, what a lot of other species want to look like and want to become. And in, in understanding this concept, if you look at the concept of hacking in computers, you have hackers that do a little bit. They can, they can do some cool stuff. They can get into some trouble. But it's the engineers, you know, the, the true engineers that have built infrastructures like Google and, and others. And the same aspect applies into, into our health and performance where we have concepts that people talk about being biohacking. But there's, there's very, very few true bioscience engineers. And we're fortunate to be able to sit with one. And it's very difficult to try to explain to people conceptually what she's created because what Christina is in a very good job at because she, she wants to remain humble constantly is you have a woman, which is an interesting part because you typically don't see the creator you know, of coming from this space, but you have a woman that has three PhDs, a PsyD and EDD, a postdoc from Harvard in nanotechnology and bioscience engineering you know, that had Lyme disease when she was 19 and lost her memory, that's had a brain tumor, that's had a spine tumor, that's had multiple kinds of skin cancer, that's lost kids to cancer, that spent 20 years in biotech from Pfizer, Alexion, Biogenidac, Johnson & Johnson, UCB, Bristol-Myers, Squibb, and Janssen. Pause right. for a second. I, I'm good at this Pause flow. for a second, I'm yeah. good at this part. It, I feel that's like we just had a whole flow from Eminem or this, Tom McDonald or something. I wrote he that, literally too. just this, wrapped that all out, so... Congratulations yeah, for like, being. I think you have another career in, in I, mind later. I can do this, That's right? Great. Well, you know, you can rap. Yeah, <laughs> I I can do a little digital underground. I can break out some comedy. I'm, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the mothership later on. I gotta. I'm gonna. I might walk on stage and embarrass myself. You never know. But <laughs> the the important part of understanding in this space, we are we are in the midst of the ascension of the species, but it's all based on choice. Right, and it's based on the experience of understanding what we're made from. That we are light. Quantum physics has proven that. You know, we are a spiritual, spiritual being. Every every aspect of science has been able to show. You know, your aura, your whether it's heart rate variability, looking at your chakras, your doshas, your meridians, all these different measurement aspects of understanding that we are a big bundle of light. But scientifically, slow down for a second because you just said something really interesting. If anybody was able to grab it, you're amidst the ascension of the species. So just pause for two seconds, take a deep breath, give me 20 seconds on that or a minute, and then I'm curious to how you will respond to what he is about to say because it could go anywhere, but it's That's almost like, it's like truth or dare up here. Well, we're at South by Southwest, so we get to bring up concepts that make people think, and you know, hopefully we're a little bit more advanced here than the rest of the population. Because um, being normal in this environment is a scary thing to dumb yourself down to. I don't think anybody here is normal, which is really, really important and crucial. Um, but if you look spiritually at where, where we are, people are becoming more aware of what we are and what, what we come from. And that honestly, this big bundle of light has been shrouded for a long period of time because of how polluted we've become, you know, with heavy metals and different environmental toxins. And I was fortunate to not have Christina's bi you know, biotech and research background, but growing up in an integrative veterinary practice, so having about 45 years of experience in integrative health in humans and animals, and understanding that in animal health, we understand two things that are really important. Environment and diet control everything. And what's interesting is when you look at people, 
it's environment and diet that control everything. And as Christina talked about in, you know, in Cure the Causes in her first book, um, of really, really touching on the aspects of physical, mental, spiritual, psychological, and emotional, that they're all tied together. You can't look at addressing one without addressing the others because we, we look at homeostasis in the body as, as a lot of people will look at it as a teeter-totter and creating balance, but it's not. It's like the most complex mobile um, that you've ever seen over a baby's bed. And if you pull on one part, every other aspect has to adjust. So you have to be aware of all these other pieces and these other concepts because if, if you're not cognizant of how they're all connected, if you put too much pressure on one area, you're actually going to pull the whole thing off. And where, where we are now, that we are, we're seeking to become more advanced you know, we're, we're hearing the conversations about microdosing and the conversations about DMT and the, the use of cannabis and other aspects and the use of different plants and different herbs because of, you know, their, their spiritual properties. The problem exists in this fact that people are playing with something in an environment that is not what those tools were made to be played with initially. Because if we go back to our indigenous roots of where we came from hundreds or thousands of years ago, where a lot of these plants were used for their spiritual benefits, we weren't in the condition that we are now. We're loaded with heavy metals and environmental pollutants and chemicals and things that have been produced that our body has no ability to deal with. And it's put us in a position where if you do things out of order, you can disrupt the entire process. You don't get to go from A to Z. You need to go from A, B, C, D, and on your way through. And this is what she understands. You can't, you can't jump because you'll screw yourself up. So my question is then, are we, and this is going to go back to you, are we in the ascension of the species or... Are we trying to save the species because of technology, all the mental health issues? I know how adamant you are and how passionate you are about mental health. Are we actually in the ascension of a species or are we dumbing ourselves down in a way, both mentally and physically, that we're just trying to save the species? Just go ahead I there. think we're at an ascension. So I believe that I had cancer. I had Lyme's disease. I lost a child. Um, I had bad business partners. I had, I was in an abusive relationship, and it was really hard. I went through a lot. Um, not that I've had a horrible life at all, but every time you go through a virus, bacteria, every time you go through an illness or a trial in life, and you come out of that journey, if you decide to make that a positive journey, then you're ascending. So I think we've got it all wrong. Everyone's like, it's the end of the world. Everything's stopping, and now it's over, and everything's going to end. And I absolutely disagree with that. You've got all this AI, all this Web3, all this social media, but here's what I'm going to say. We have to embrace it. It's part of life. doesn't mean we have to like it. We have to understand it, and we have to ascend. And what I mean by that is we've got a choice here. We either stop and say we're failing, the world's over, everything's gone, we have horrible lives, or we take the economic crisis, the oil and energy crisis, the healthcare crisis, and we become stronger human beings. And I believe this company has that because we have an economic model that gives 50% back to every country we're in, and we're getting ready to be in 80 countries. And we're going people, into don't the, the largest people. country, which is India. So we're giving that back to the people in those countries. And then... We have a healthcare wellness model where we're helping people basically biohacker become the best version. And I say this like, I wish we didn't have to be caterpillars to become butterflies. But we teach our kids to read about the caterpillar becoming the butterfly, yet we're scared to do it. We're like, wait a minute, it's a dark world. Yeah, it is dark when you're a caterpillar in that cocoon and you're scared to death. But we can arise and become a butterfly. And I feel like this company, with the Root Brands and DRC Ventures companies, that we're doing that. And I say we, it's not us. It's the network of people that are working together. Instead of giving up, that's what they're doing. And then I, I want to say this too. I know Clayton wants to talk, but I really want to say this, this other part. We have the patents to make energy go to clean energy, 
oil, gas, electricity, nuclear, nuclear energy, that we can clean it and go 30% more through the patents that have been written that I wrote years ago. We have environmental remediation of the land, air, and water because when a nuclear bomb goes off or there's pollution or there's manufacturing and innovation, those toxins go all the way up to the stratosphere and they don't leave. We're impacted by each other. So think about this. If we're impacted by each other, or by everything that's going around negatively, then why aren't we ascending and impacting everything positively? And that's what I feel like we have the opportunity to do right now. Hold on. So you just said patents. You said we. Let, let's touch on this a little bit because I think there is a conversation about intellectual property and business development and you know investments. Your first patent was on the reversal of aging. Of the land, air, and water and people. Yeah, okay, and, so and energy. Kind of important, yeah. but also the stabilization of hydrogen fuel. Yeah, I did that. Are, are we there yet? No, I mean, but you already hold a patent on it because you understand the mechanisms of action and how to do it. I do. Were, were you labeled as an idiot, savant, and social when you're an adjunct professor in Johns Hopkins? Yeah, but this isn't about me. No, but there's, yeah. a, there's an important part of understanding. This is where I get to brag about my better half. You, you have an innate ability to understand things and, and do things that have not been done. You just got a patent approved last month for an improved metabolism of alcohol in the liver. And in the human body, yeah. Explain that a little bit, because that's kind of a big deal. So... So first of all, I do want to say this, and I appreciate both of you guys are <laughs> we're business partners and we're, we're, we all have a strong relationship, so everyone compliments me. But I will say this. We're each as important as each other. I don't care if you're in marketing or if you're in PR. I don't care if you are a teacher or you're serving coffee. We each impact each other in a unique way that can change this world, which is why that network is so important. And my piece, because I really believe we each have this mission, and we have to fill the mission. And I think what we're missing, and I, I do think we can ascend to accept this, what we're missing is how important we each are, not how important one person is. Like you look at a scientist that wins a Nobel Peace Prize, and I have done a lot of work, but you look at that and you think that person's like contributing to the world. But each person, Clay, is, is contributing equally to the world. And so, yes, I did write the patents, but the patents were written for humanity. So, for example... One of the patents is for the circadian rhythm, sleep deprivation, jet lag, and we haven't completely fulfilled that, but the patents were accepted. Um, the skin coating was accepted. Well, it's almost accepted. We, we're fighting that one. Then the alcohol metabolism was one that was really important to me because I really wanted to work with um, addiction and rehabilitation because there's this weird fact in life. We feel guilt and shame if we're overweight, if we have addiction, if we have mental health problems, and we shouldn't feel that way. The truth is there are so many heavy metals in the world. Our body is bogged down, and so it doesn't handle food the same way. Then we've got GMOs. We've got pollution. Another problem is our bodies don't function like they used to, like our liver and kidneys used to be able, and our bladder and pancreas to, to filter out all of that. But because we've been exposed to so much innovation and pollution, it's not as easy anymore. So we need help. So I wrote patents that would help. So we are ascending. We are ascending. We are we're, 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 and I want people not to feel shame that have addiction. I used to work in a methadone clinic. I mean, it's a crisis that's occurred because of the negativity. I want every person to become the person they were meant to be. So this patent was important to me. It doesn't actually just apply to alcohol. It applies to other drug substances that you need to get out of your body. Or if people are choosing that as a format to help them relax or to help them deal with the stress that's going on. It helps metabolize it better out of the body so that they're healthier. And that's important to me because I feel like we live in a world right now where it's either left or right. We're living in shame. We're living in guilt. And I'm just tired of it. So that patent was important to me on so many levels. You hit on a, an important aspect, and this is where our entire plus, business Plus, goes. I don't want to forget this. I didn't want to gain weight when I drank. When I had something to drink, <laughs> small thing, problem. I didn't want to gain weight. I wanted to block sugar and carbs so that if I did choose to drink that or people cho chose to drink, it didn't harm their body and didn't as much and didn't cause them to gain weight. So that's a mic drop moment right there. <laughs> so yeah. you hit on the importance of community huh. and, you know, our entire business philosophy, which we'll dive into a little bit 
is is all built around you know the the power of community. But in your in your first book, and cure the causes, which everyone should get because it's outstanding, you you talk about the the importance of understanding that we are each an imperfect piece to a perfect puzzle. Yeah. And touch touch on this a little bit because it's been one of the greatest things I love to expand upon because you wrote it and it's my favorite subject. I have a PhD in Romanetics, <laughs> but the talk about this a little bit because we we talk about community and you talk about the importance of every individual understanding that they are of great value and that each one of us regardless of our audience is of influence so expand upon that a little bit and then we tie that together to our philosophical base yeah i feel like you know this world is beautiful chaos getting ready to go into india i always say i love india but it's it's a lot of people a lot of energy negative and positive and um, we all have that. We all have different characteristics. None of us are perfect. And each of those pieces that we have can contribute to the world if we use it the right way. Even the things we see as see negative, and I mean that. Like when people have diabetes or people are overweight or they have an addiction, they look at it, like I said, as shame. And the thing is, that piece that's imperfect and that person can actually be used to transform and make the world a better place if you recognize that it's a weakness that you can turn into a strength. And that impact is so important. So as a scientist that did you know, graduate work at Harvard, I, I understand that our cells talk. So like I'm sitting here, our cells are talking across the room, even when you're on a Zoom or you're in social media, energetically, and this is a fact, your cells talk. Just like in the body, cancer cells try to make the rest of the cells be cancerous, right? Because they talk. They have pathways. We understand now as scientists and doctors that this same thing applies. And so we used to think, like the CIA, the FBI used to think people had ESP or they would hire psychics, right, that would help them. They still do, by the way, guide them. In fact, you know this. They've said, mm -hmm. gosh, Christina, you could walk in a room and you know everything that's going on. I'm like, that's not what I do for a living. I'm a scientist. Ted knows. That's my, my world is science. I don't want to go into another, <laughs> another world. I truly, that's what I do. But I am able to understand what's going on in a room, even if someone doesn't like me right away, or what's going on between people, if they're hurt or angry. And I think that's because I've spent a lot of time meditating, prayer, praying, and really tapping into the AI of my body. And I want to say that again. You have this intelligence inside your body you're not tapping into. And if people make you feel like you're crazy because you're not, well, they're wrong. Because scientifically, we know for a fact there are these individuals in life that have ascended and they're able to tap into this. We also know that everyone can do this if they focus on this, but they've got to spend the time doing it. So for me, this connectivity, this energy, you need to try to spend around as many positive people as you can that are working toward an ascension and not working toward a death of a society. Because if we spend our time around people that are always talking about the negative, that are always talking about it's the end of the world and we're not going to be able to do anything, um, then that's who we become. And then we focus on that and then we start believing it. And I really do love like sustainable living, innovation, remediation, and all of those things. I'm not trying to get rid of that. I think we all move towards that as a society. But I also think we have to remember, this is not the end of our world. Like I worked on a project where we were working on going to the Mars. And I remember saying, I don't want to work on this project. I want to work on how we're going to live here on this earth. Because the truth is, when they go to Mars, they're only taking about 100 to 150 people, mostly O negative and O positive blood types, which I'm O negative. So I'm not maybe you get to go. Oh, yeah. You get to go. <laughs> no, but I don't care about that. Like, I'm not going there. Like, and, and that will happen probably within our lifetime. But I'm going to tell you, we need to focus on this world and not just our generation, but future generations and how we do ascend and evolve. We do have the capability now as scientists to put a device in the ear and know what everyone's thinking in this room. Hold on, not in your brain, just in your ear. You put yeah. it in your ear, well, you could in the brain. You could bioprint the brain. But but that's another topic. You can bioprint or clone almost anything, and that's a fact too, but it's not happening rapidly everywhere because it's so expensive, and it's not something that's easily done, and there's an ethical debate on that, right, and a moral debate. 
But the truth is we have that capability. And a lot of us don't want to hear about it. They, we don't want to deal with it. We don't understand. Now, if you were in a PhD postdoc class or graduate class in some of these universities, you would be able to talk to other people that work on these projects or if you were involved in the projects. Someone like you. Are those projects ever spoken about publicly? Do people ever? Probably not a lot. Yeah, but I do, I mean, you could look it up. I mean, I'm sure there's been, I mean, you can go under a machine, like there's machines now that are available that you can tell what happened to someone consciously and subconsciously when they were two years old. If they had a cat, you will know the color of the cat. You can see it, like they remember it in their subconscious, and you can tap into that. You'll even know what the name of the cat was and if they love the cat, which is so interesting. And I remember the first time I was exposed to that, I was like, wow, that is so interesting. But the, the ability for, I would say, the mass population to accept and understand that is a hard conversation. So I think our solution, which was developing the root brands and DRC Ventures and going throughout the world and step by step doing the process to make us evolve into these butterflies, because you have to detox the system, you have to clean the system, and become stronger. I think that's our approach that people can accept. And you know, in my 20s and 30s, I was, I was a little, er, uh, what, what should I say, ignorant, because I thought I could just go out and talk about things and people would accept it. And now I understand strategically, there's an approach that humanity and mankind can understand. And I think that's the approach we're taking so that we can evolve into better human beings across the world. How important do you think timing is to everything that's happened in the last four years with Root, DRC Ventures? Because well, yeah. there had to be some, s I, I do think that timing has something to do with everyone's success or everyone's failure in yeah. some respect. So, you know, how important was it for timing, Clay, when you started the company, how the company started, where she was, everything she had done, including authors to go work on things in other countries. How important was timing for you? Because this ascension that we've now kind of started talking about, this ascension that we're going through, there's a timing aspect to it, which is really interesting. There is, and we don't dictate it. I think that's, that's the fun part in, in understanding this, is there's, there's a divine timing to everything and the interesting aspects of nature that the United States is the only country in the world that has a primary focus on pharmacology and in the pharmaceutical industry. And we, we call what we would deem to be indigenous plant use as alternative medicine when I'm pretty sure for since the beginning of time that we didn't use synthetics. It's always been, okay, these herbs, these plants, these things, but God has created this environment and it is divine that where there's a problem, there's a solution. And this has happened from the creation of this entire environment, which is really the foundation of what we work with, that when this planet was terraformed, because it's 70% water, 17% silica, and then a mixture of other components, and it's what's interesting is the human body consists of 70% water, 17% silica, and a mixture of a few other things. But when volcanoes were... I think were you should say that again so people understand. It's the same... Our bodies are the same as the environment. We, yeah. we are right. a product of our environment, a literal product of our environment. What you talk about is the genetics of the leaves on that tree are really close to our genetics. Well, we share the same DNA. So that means what they showed in Avatar, that if you look at the perspective and you can see everything, that we truly are connected to everything. Yeah. And we come from it. But the volcanic eruptions that terraform this planet, volcanoes are the largest natural emitter of not carbon dioxide, because carbon dioxide is kind of important, but the release of heavy metals like mercury and other metals. That eruption actually created the land for everything to be done, but the emission of all of those toxic gases and toxic metals, if they weren't remediated, would have left this environment inhospitable. So at the same time that those eruptions were forming that, they also created different deposits of different crystals and clays. I love clay, by the way. Um, uh, Self-promotion is great. It's true. <laughs> no problem with If you don't love yourself, you have a problem. That is the most important investment you can make. But the, this class of minerals and crystals and clays are actually what God created, what nature created to remediate the environment. And it was done simultaneously. 
And you can see this because the beautiful part, we, we see this in movies all the time, and you see this especially in areas that have a more spiritual context, like here in Austin or in Nashville. And if people understand crystals and how important crystals are now, and they love quartz. And quartz is so special because it's beautiful and it's this amazing crystal and it holds energy and does all this stuff. And it's in the same class. But the one that's the most powerful is what they use for kitty litter. That's the hint. So this amazing little crystal that you figured out how to unlock, that's something that the biotech industry has been using for decades, that the Department of Energy has been using for environmental cleanup of the worst environmental issues has been using for decades is what nature put here to clean up the environment. And now we're at a point in human history where we're so polluted, we're in the midst of an extinction event at the same time we're in the midst of an ascension event. And then comes along a bioscience engineer that has a very interesting name, if we break it down, that has figured out how to take what nature created to clean up the environment and figured out a mechanism to process that, to make it bioavailable, that it can clean up our environment better than ever before. So being able to very passively, systemically, very slowly clean up the operating system, to remove the trash, to allow the body to become more conducive at doing what it's made to do. And here's the secret to bioscience engineering for everyone to understand because all of the tools are given to you. Everything has been shown to you. We just have to figure out how to understand it. We're a biological computer. You would agree? I agree. So yeah. we're a biological computer. So let's look at computers as a way to understand what we are. There's a place in the United States that has really expensive real estate and has been really good at development of, of a specific industry and we'll call it the computer industry, and the software industry, and the tech industry, and they call it Silicon Valley. You know, what's really interesting is why they called it Silicon Valley. So, going back to what we talked about, we're 70% water, we're 17% silica. Yeah. The planet is 17% silica. The most important thing in a computer happens to be microchips that are derived from silica so this little crystal that is so effective at cleaning up the environment is a sodium alumino silicate that just so happens to be nature's most bioavailable source of bioavailable silica so if a computer doesn't have upgraded microchips and more advanced microchips. And as the, they were talking about before with you know, investments, NVIDIA has been going nuts because they created new microchips that are able to run faster than Intel chips that help support AI. But even NVIDIA chips are designed for video. The new chips, as we met from Doniker when we were in that place in Switzerland that people don't like to talk about, but we were there that he's created a chip that actually is designed for AI and runs even faster than NVIDIA chips. So if you want, a, you want an investment for later this year, it's not even close to IPOing yet. But it comes down to silica. We don't get enough of this. You figured out how to take what nature created to clean up the environment that just so happens to be the source for the bioavailable silica as well, that to create a mechanism that removes the toxins and at the same time is delivering the key trace minerals and the silica because it's the silica in the human body that allows the rest of these pathways to actually start working. Because you can do all of these other good things and add all these good things, but if you don't have the precursor, the primary mechanism that allows all of those to work, you're not going to get the outcomes. You can't do it. So what did you do with the silica? <laughs> what? Tell, tell the people a little bit about the silica and why the silica is and so what important. is this so um i want to go back to your question was how important the timing was 
Uh, Because you asked the question and then then he he goes goes around it. It's it's all timing. It's important. So I think the timing was important. And I think there was also a, um, and by the way, time travel is real. People can, it's hard to go back. You can go frontward. And that's been proven. Strength theory is too. The black hole theory is as well. It's no longer a theory. You can look it up. But we, when we went to school, I'm so old that like they told us it wasn't, right? It was a theory. But I studied it. And I had a five-year-old Kreider at the time that believed it, went to school and his teachers told him it wasn't true. In Germany, they were able to take an orange and an apple and go 80 miles in a split second, right? This happened years ago. It happened in the 80s. So you guys can look that up. And we've advanced even further since then. Uh, Silica is one of the major things that helps with things like that. When you look at the black hole and string theory and everything that is in quantum physics, it involves a lot of things that have to do with silica. So I've worked in different formats on different projects, uh, delivery mechanisms with human monoclonal antibodies, um, have a formation of that as well. So I just, to be really honest, you know this, Clay, you came to me with the project and I was like, that's going to be kind of boring. I'm not sure I want to do it. And he was like, I really need you to do it. And I was the CEO of a healthcare company across the United States at the time. And I went back in the lab and I worked on it and um, read everything I could get my hands on. I had a long history of working in this industry where I was taught by some of the top people throughout the world. Because when you travel to that many countries, you're exposed to your most brilliant minds, right? When you work with the top governments, the top, top corporations, you're exposed to everything. I was told for 20 years what happened in the last four years was going to happen. So I was prepared for the fact that our environment's toxic, things are going to happen, it's a matter of time, and we will go through, whether it's engineered by human scientists or by the environment and it occurring through mutations, these things are going to happen, right, where you had this basically breakdown in healthcare, and I, um, it just, the timing was perfect, so I believe timing is extremely important. I also believe, and this is what I think is important for people to understand, even though I feel like I have really good discernment and I can connect really easily, I listen to everyone around me. I feel what they're feeling. I don't disregard what anyone says. I don't care if it's a mother or uh, someone that works in music. I listen because I feel like there's messages all around us. So you really believed and, and convinced me that I needed to work on this project. So I threw myself into it. But taking silica and making it bioavailable and efficacious and safe to the body is a hard thing to do. I'm just going to say that. So you've got a lot of companies that I think tried to do it. Um, I think you have pharmaceuticals that will come out later. I know I have patents on that as well, but naturally doing it where it would safely take care of the body to help with aging, to help with longevity, to help with mental health, to help with autoimmune epigenetics. And I can't claim to cure anything. I'm not allowed to. I just have patents that back some of the stuff I say. And then I worked on it. But that was a hard project. It was a lot of work. It took a lot of energy. And it took, you know, I'm fortunate because I'm able to piece different things together from my education and my career traveling and learning from other people. So it was something that I feel like, and I know, and this is not arrogantly at all, because I don't think I'm any more important than anyone else. But I feel like I was positioned at a perfect time to be able to do a project the world needed. Which goes back to the the comment of timing, which is why I asked yeah. it. But in addition to the timing, one thing that I'll say that I've I've picked up in spending time with you is that uh, a lot of people look at your educational background. Uh, there was a poster up recently, and a guy walked up to it and said, did she go to actually all those schools? Because it was like a somebody just took a thing of mud and threw it at yeah. the, 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 and there was just schools all over it. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And then she worked at those companies and then she's doing this. And so, and then he uh, asked, is she a hundred? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that's interesting about all of this is it's not only the timing. Um, it took a lot of time for you to learn and sit back and listen for years and years and years and years in order for you to do something that hasn't been done. And a lot of the ways that I often describe it is you took water and made it ice. Yeah, it's true. And I I have to say, you know, your most brilliant minds in this world do not have an extensive education. So when you look at Jobs and Gates and Elon and all the top scientists, which for some reason are men, 
<laughs> mostly. But if you look at it, a lot of them don't have an advanced edu- education. So in a lot of ways, and I say this tons of times, Clayton's one of the smartest scientists I know, but he didn't have that formal education. Um, I will say the education I had both in a classroom and out, because I attended classes and schools overseas and not just in the United States. And at one point in my career for like a year, I was criticized for that. I had to deal legally with it. And, and the truth is I didn't have to have all of that, but that all led me up to being able to work on this project and fitting the different pieces together. And I feel like each piece is so important. It's like every area of your life or clays. And, um, I'm very, I'm very lucky that I have the kind of memory I have, which is iodetic. I'm very fortunate that I speed read and that I have that. But again, if I had those gifts and I didn't do anything positive for humanity, they mean nothing. Isn't, and isn't, isn't though the, the fact that you studied so many different, um, so many different ways of science? Like you said, going, I, I believe that being overseas, what you just said, is actually a huge benefit, oh, yeah. even though it's not necessarily um, looked upon the same way in the United States. Yeah. Having those experiences, I mean, just talk for a second about yeah. the ability to be taught in other countries around the world and what you learn there, and then being able to piece it together so you weren't always just, are we killing a cat? Is there a cat that, <laughs> did, a, did a cat die? Oh. He's trying to call you it out. It's okay. Like I'll no. take up I'm for sorry. you. I'm <laughs> sorry. I just was like, what is that cat? We keep kicking the cat. <laughs> the cat was in the fan belt. That's but, what that was. But there is something to say about the manner of, of the diversity of oh, the yeah. education that you've had and where people want to, they want to like look down upon that in some way. I think that's one of the most under, like underlying factors to oh, your yeah. success. Yeah. I, I do think like my graduate certification in the medical program at Harvard was important. I'm being honest. That taught me a lot of things. Cornell did as well. So those are schools that it's hard to debate. Harvard, with. Cornell, those are good schools. Those are good schools. But I went to South Alabama. I went to Murray State. I mean, I went to a lot of different schools. And if you ask me how important that education was, there's different things I took from each of the parts of the education, but I would say my biggest things were learned internationally. I helped develop medical schools in South Africa and Africa, so they awarded a medical degree, but I don't talk about it because it would be criticized, I feel. Like, um, I went and studied strategic science. I also studied um, a lot of epidemiology and really how to help with toxicology and the environment. And I do have honorary degrees, but the ones that Clayton is stating are not honorary. I actually did, I learned. But again, all those pieces led me up to this one time. You ask about timing. It led me up to this. And if you ask um, if it made me a better person or if I'm special because of that, not at all. It was easy to take tests. It was easy to learn. Um, And so I look at this. We talk about networking. We talk about connecting. And I feel like we have to connect in our bodies as well. We have to accept who we are and what we're meant to do. We shouldn't be jealous of anyone. We need to be empowered by others. And I think um, there's this thing about cellular health that we talk about. Sick cells are jealous of healthy cells. Did you know that? The chemicals that are released in the body and the pathways with IL-2, IL-4, P450 pathways become very clogged because what happens is when there's a sick cell or an autoimmune problem, that those cells cause all this inflammation and energetic work inside that the healthy cells have to overcome. And in the real world, it happens too. When there's a breakthrough in humanity, a breakthrough in our evolution, then all the sick people Right, all the people that are jealous and envious and have anger. It's like mean girls. It's like mean girls. I, I was I was gonna use one of my favorite quotes of all time that the the sick cells hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> they despise us because they are not us. Okay, that came from the movie what's uh Franco movie. We we're in the middle of an interview. I mean okay, so that you was gotta, a joke you in gotta that. drop it when you can. I love <laughs> You know where that comes from. Okay. So, so, so I have to say, I love, I love that he makes us laugh. <laughs> but no, um, it's so true. And that's why I, every time I hear this negativity or it's the end of the world, I keep coming back to that's our choice, right? That's our choice. And I just won't live that way. And I also won't let others 
I had reached a point as a female, and I, I want to say this to anyone who has a daughter or a sister or a mother, I want to give a shout out to men who support women and that men that understand um, that it's okay to do multiple things as a female or a man. And I also want to give a shout out to other women that are not jealous of someone that's been able to do something they haven't yet. Because the truth is, it's easy for all of us to energetically feel like we're uncomfortable because someone's done something we haven't. And I always apply it back again to the inside of your body because the inside of your body is a whole community. It's It's a whole city. It's talking, it's living, it's breathing. And in order for your inside to be healthy, on the outside, you've got to get rid of the jealousy and the anger and the fear and the guilt and everything that's really holding us back as a as a human as humanity. So I know in my broadcasting classes because I have a degree in humanities <laughs> with a focus in business communications and kinesiology. I have a bachelor of arts. I'm educated. <laughs> and we we would call this a segue because what, what I wanted to bring up, you've done all this scientifically, you're a savant, you've you've got these patents, you've done all this research, you've created solutions that reverse aging, that do all these things that everybody needs, everybody can use from babies to I'm I'm doing my part. <laughs> I know, my my part's just a rant. Let's talk business. So you're a scientist, you've done all these things. You've started three hundred companies. I haven't started that many. That that's pretty good, right? So Together, we decided to do some things because you have this mission and purpose that you were put here for. Um, and I'm smart enough to understand that my wife's a little bit more dynamic than I am. And I was going to build an empire around her to allow her to do what she was made to do. Guys, if you want business class 101, find an amazing woman and just build everything around her. This, this is not hard. But what, what we created was taking, taking a concept of creating quality, creating outcomes, Right, because that's that's the most crucial thing in business. If you create outcomes, whether you provide a product or a service, you're going to find success. Mm-hmm. So everything is based around outcomes. But we wanted solve to do things problem. solve solve a problem, find a need, solve a problem, do it well. And the most important investment you're going to make is, is not in a hedge fund. It's not in anything else. It's in people. Mm-hmm. Right. And our our goal, our mission was not just how we can help people from a health standpoint, because there's two really important pieces that are needed in this world today. And, and they are two things that run parallel. And regardless of how much you have of one, you always want the other. And a lot of times people will sacrifice the other to get one and then want to use the money that they earn to buy back the other one, which is health and wealth. Right. Right? And as you mentioned, some of the smartest people that we've seen in the last few decades, a couple of them aren't here because they sacrificed everything that they, they could to make the money or to build an empire. And we can look at Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would do anything right now. He'd spend $100 billion to buy a new liver yeah. because he sacrificed his health to build this empire and then never got to see what the fruition of that was. So these two things are linear. But what I saw in business is that most businesses have created a vacuum. Right, a financial vacuum that they're selling services or selling products, but they're not doing the one thing that's most important is to invest in those that create your value, which is your customer base. You know, so if you're able to provide solutions in a world where we're all connected, right, that we're already all connected socially, we're networked, we're already all connected. We are six degrees from no longer Kevin Bacon, we are six degrees from six and a half billion people. That if that's the premise, then as a company, you can take your products, your services, and shift your spend, your advertising, your marketing spend, and put it into the people that create the value because people will create customers for you if you take care of them. It's our nature. Right? I watched Amazon grow from its inception growing up in southwest Washington when it was selling used books. I see the AWS shirts. Huh? I love that. And... We watched my mom and my grandmother become some of the first customers of Amazon, and they created an account. They started buying books, and they loved it, and they told their friends, and their friends told their friends, and they told their friends, and they told their friends. For about 15 years, I didn't do any advertising because the consumer base created the consumer base. And they provided a great service and were able to build an infrastructure around providing a better service, which has actually created an infrastructure for other companies to provide better services to people. You know, So now that... If you have the ability to have access to infrastructure, 
which we've learned because we launched this concept in February of 2020 and then had to jump from the United States to 27 countries in 30 days because of this concept of, of taking the investment and putting it in You've actually taken a retail brand and created a white space and and done some crazy stuff. Yeah, but we're, this is about... Look, I know, why, but... Why I, don't you... Go ahead. I want insight from, from both on a business standpoint because you're not just the scientist. You're a businesswoman. And this is, this is the one concept that often is missed, right, of women in business. And you, I, you've taught me this from female CEOs will usually step down in the first two years because of getting attacked. But female CEOs, statistically almost every time outperform their male counterparts because of how their mind works and how they function, but they get sued and they don't like being sued and they don't like being attacked. So that causes chaos. So in, in a concept of investing in people, how, how have you taken the business mind to adapt into taking creations to help people and then also taking this mechanism to help people financially and creating value. And I say it because I help do it with you, but touch on this. So I want to say, um, first of all, the 300 companies, if I would have been successful and made to a billion dollars in any one of those companies, I wouldn't be where I am today. So Timing. The timing, and they weren't all successful, so it sounds like I did a lot more than I did. I just didn't quit, right? That's my key to everything, and I, I honestly believe that um, – I'll disagree with you a little bit. I think um, – I think female CEOs, not that I'm against women and being a CEO, I'm a CEO of DRC Ventures, I'm the chief science officer at Root, we all three work together in all those companies, Um, but I believe having women strategically on a board of directors or as part of your executive team are very important because of the intuition, discernment, and ability women have to multitask. So it's not that I'm saying you have to be a CEO of your woman, but I think you need to be part of a leadership group because we are leaders just like men are leaders. I mean, everyone in this room came out of a woman. I don't care if you're a man. <laughs> no matter how you identify. <laughs> so so it's, it's, you got to love women, right? And that doesn't mean, like I, I was raised in the South, and, you know, my mom's family was Indian, or Ch- Cherokee, Choctaw. My dad's was from the Middle East and then uh, Eastern Europe. And so I was raised in a subservient, like to be subservient, to serve, but then to also lead, thank goodness. And Isn't I, that the best quality of a great leader, though? Yeah, I hope so. To be a servant? Yeah. Well, I I think one it it is. And I think that all three of us, you know, when we talk about going from one country to 27 countries in two years, then to 67, then to 70, and then to 80 countries, um, it took men and women working together that supported each other. And we use the network of people in the root brands with these positive ambassadors throughout the world that have impacted to speak for us in a microphone, because you're right, we put our energy and our money into people and not just products, which is kind of a scary thing to do, to be honest. When you give back 50%, and I would argue that that you gave back and we gave back 60 to 70% because we give so much to philanthropy and so much to causes around the world. Um, I don't care if it's in Saudi Arabia. I don't care if it's in Japan. I mean, we're helping people all over the world because we want to evolve and ascend as a group. And that means we have to give back. And this positivity did not just come from me. It came from the men that I work with. And that's why we, we, we have a fintech system that from an AI perspective, what we're doing and where we'll be going this year is one of the top companies, in my opinions, in the world. Um, the economic, the revenue, the P&L, everything that we've grown together has been phenomenal. But again, it's not just a leadership team. It's people listening, caring, and then working with the rest of the world. And that's where I think the three of us have been successful in doing that because we're giving back. But paying attention to the surroundings, like when Ted started this and said, are we stopping as a culture and we're going to die? Are we going to be extinct? Are we going to evolve? Of course we're going to evolve. Right, but that doesn't mean it's going to be fun while we're doing it. But we have to dig in and do it anyway. And um, I don't know if I answered your question. I kind of went around it. But I, I really think it's important for the world to understand 
when there's a crisis, that's the time that you make yourself better. That's when you can make a change in the world. That's where you can make better health decisions. You can make more financially. And I don't know if people know that. And that's not just right now. That's throughout history. So it's the people that stayed home and that didn't leave their home and got scared and refused to I realized the world was going to go on that have suffered the most, unfortunately, but I'm hoping this year is a wake up call to everyone. So because your economy's down, your gas and oil, it's a crisis, right? Your political debates, your health care issues that people are scared of. Now's the time to go out and really change the world. It really is. Now's the time to be the change maker and the artificial intelligence and the group that does it. And so when I hear people talk about AI and fintech systems, we have it. Um, I used, back in 2009, I did two patents around coding and programming in the IT space. That's not my focus now, as you guys know, but we all integrated that into what we're doing. We were not, a if we would have been a company that did not integrate the latest technology into what we were doing, we wouldn't have been able to get into 76 countries in three years. Like, that's a huge thing during COVID, and I'm just going to say this. I, I credit, I know Ted and I stepped in. They were my products. You took them, and I credit you. We both credit that to you, Clay, because you had the nerve to do it. Then Ted and I stepped in to really help grow this and run this. But it was, it was literally getting a financial system in place through AI and different types of technology that would take in, accept money, exchange money in all those countries – Going and shipping, regulatory sourcing, that was a lot of work, right? It took us making sure that we used all the latest technology. We embraced everything, whether it was science or governments or the network that we had. And that was a lot, right? It took a lot of work. But again, I think we ascended as a company because we simply didn't quit. It's that easy. You just don't quit. And I think that people like jobs and some of the people, unfortunately, that sacrificed their health, what they should have done, and you're right, is make sure they looked out for their health and wealth at the same time because each of us are president, our queen of king of our bodies, right? Inside is this beautiful world that we can control to a certain extent. And I think that we limit ourselves by not understanding that we can control a lot that goes on. And I hear, I can see and I hear people that are pessimistic saying that's not true. But it is true. We have control of a lot more than we think we have control of. And healthy, a healthy body doesn't have health problems. But if you're high functioning, if you're an entrepreneur, the most valuable asset is your health and ability to function and process at a level that's beyond other people. Because if you can't and you can't keep up with what you need to do, you're going to fall apart anyway. Yeah. Well, it's like the, the product we have zero in. And it's an adaptogenic nootropic. And it's funny. We were at the Oscars and we met the guy that was with... Um, Bradley Cooper, that was the main guy that sold the, the product. For Limitless. <laughs> and he came up and he said, I love Zero In. I got it. Can I have more? And I gave him a huge packet. He goes, no, I need more. And I said, well, I don't know if we can give more because we had given him so much. He goes, listen, I was the main person in limit, Limitless. He's like, you Is know, the, they made the movie they with made me the in They made the movie over right? <laughs> me. You should take it. And he said, what did you do to make this product help with focus, help with performance, help with sexual health? Um and I said it was originally made for sexual performance for women. And then when we tested it, it was able to make men and women perform both. That's a whole nother talk, though. No, yeah. I know. But not, but not just sexually. We got not to just the sexually. end. We only really have two minutes left. We, we can't go into sex <laughs> now. <laughs> not just sexually. started with sex. But from a cognitive performance perspective, because we need to perform. Right. Thank you. So, so we did that together as a group. And if you said to me, well, Christina, you did the patents. You did the formulas. Here's what I'm going to say. I would have accomplished nothing, nothing with those formulas, nothing without the network of people that we have, including the people up here on this stage. She needed the blue glasses. So hold on. So we, uh, we're supposed to, we only have two minutes left. Yeah, two minutes. So I want to, I want to wrap this up in a little bit of both because it's become about ascension. Yeah. So I want to know for people that don't talk to you on a regular basis and don't know all of you with the Louis shoes and the, <laughs> hey. and the bracelets and the Bad hair and, bougie. and the glasses. <laughs> I want to know, where are you ascending to, not only pro personally, but professionally, in 2000? What's the, next, what's the next five years of Ascension look for you? My, look my like for you? goal is really simple. It's just TGD. It's total global domination. Right. <laughs> um, and if, if we fail, 
fuck it. That's pretty good. Um, but the the goal of taking what she's created to the masses and be able to put like we did 61 million dollars in revenue last year we'll do over 100 million this year and last year we put over 27 million dollars into the hands of our of our consumers right i haven't seen anybody else in in business go you know what we we did 60 million dollars in revenue but i put 20 million dollars back into the people that created it for us you know, my goal, if, if we can do a billion dollars in revenue and I get to put 450 to $500 million into people's pockets that created that value, that pleases me greatly. So if it's a billion, if it's 5 billion, if it's 10 billion, you go, oh, what's your profitability? Well, we make a little bit, but we give a lot, right? Because we that's that's the goal. Not always great for your VC friends, but amazing. But we don't have VC people. friends we because we VC. did it on our own. And that's the yeah. key. Yeah. That's the key. Sorry, VC people. I'm not your friend. But call me. <laughs> All right, so so then to wrap this up, because now we're going to go over, where are we ascending to, Dr. Rom, and what should we be most focused on in that ascension in 30 seconds or less so they don't yell at me? So I have great business partners, so I don't have to worry as much about the business, although I'm right there with you guys strategically. You're sure involved. I'm involved. Well, I, I work, but I, my goal is to make people understand who they are and how we can ascend and how we are able to communicate through cellular health. Like we can talk, even though you're over there and I've never met you. That's why when you meet someone and you feel this connection, it's actually real. Don't ignore it. You've got to, you've got to pay attention. And that's what I've spent my life doing. My goal is to teach that, to help heal and to love throughout the world. And people think that's me being a martyr, but it's not. I've experienced a lot. I feel like I've lived a hundred lives. I have four children and that's the rest of my life. It's going to be spent on really helping people be leaders and uh, be servants. And I do have a goal in four years to be a billion dollar company. So there you have it. Oh, I was trying to go on your, we're, I'm a minute. Okay. Let's play radio shack. Here we go. You got questions. We got answers. And we can't talk about sex because that's going to take too long. We'll do that later. Yeah. It's like, okay. Fine. I, wa- I, I got 20 years of, of watching society. You know, they say every, every business is, that's an overnight success is decades in the making. It was a matter of looking at what Amazon had done. It was a matter of watching what social media had done. And it was a matter of growing up in a veterinary practice of watching what my parents had done because having the conversation with my dad, you know, towards the end of their, their career, I was like, what, what's the thing that makes you happiest with what you did? He's like, well, we had 20, 20 employees that they... Um, their livelihood was based on what we did and a matter of taking care of your of your clients and so when I looked at that I was like well what if we can take it from 20 to 20,000 or 200,000 or 20 million you know because there's every who needs to be worth a hundred billion dollars right everybody's got a number and it's not even close to that to be comfortable to be able to take care of your family indefinitely you know your kids your grandkids and at that point what are you going to do with it and We've got friends who own yachts. Never met someone that owns a yacht that goes on it alone. You know, right? So if if you're able to take take your friends, your family, those that you love, those that you enjoy, you know, spending time with with you on on the road trip, you're gonna do it. You know, so if you know that you're not gonna do this alone, because it is a team, and it's not just a team up here, but it's a team of consumers, it's a network, it's a community that that's where you put your investment in. And I, I just wanted to do something different because my psychologist, uh, who's amazing, and I happen to marry her, <laughs> diagnosed me a while ago as being oppositionally defiant, which was the greatest diagnosis that I've ever been given. You know, So I'm like, look, if I'm oppositionally defiant, I'm going to do what others haven't done because I want to do it different than what others have done. So I was like, screw it. We're just going to put money in people. So, so to, you know, it's so hard to compliment Clay because he's, he's normally talking. So you can't compliment him if, if he's talking. That's true. Um, That's true. He's, he verified it. But <laughs> Let's rewind the tape. I made sure she, was, she laid it down on tape. One of the few people that you'll meet that gets more joy out of giving than out of receiving, and I think the whole premise behind his business model, and I said it to him the first day I met him, I said, uh, the only person that can fuck this up is you. That's true. 
I said, and if you, said, you if if this works, I'm like, that's not a question. It works. So it's it's a matter of also being true to who you are, and then along the way, not forgetting all of those people that went and 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 he's created a system that like meth methodically rewards people for their own actions, and I think that's kind of the the key. There's a there's genius in this package that is unannounced and. Later in life, in 10 years, what I said to him is like, in 10 years, everyone is going to be doing this because this is the most altruistic way to actually do business. And if everyone lived in this premise, there would be much fewer 100 billionaires and many more 100 millionaires. And we should all be in that place together as one. So because if I you create value, if you create value, you're creating value and you should be rewarded as such, right? And that's where you can look at it from a stock option standpoint if you're working your ass off in a corporation. But because we're already, if you find things that you like and you share with your friends, you're creating values. You should be rewarded for it. But the key is that you're connected to other people who are connected to other people and connected to other people. And if you create that cascade, you should be rewarded for that as well. And that's really, that's really the goal. Right? See how I couldn't even finish complimenting him? <laughs> yeah. But... If, if, if you want to know that there's complexity under this hard candy shell, how is a guy like me going to get a woman like that? That's, that's right. Uh, any other questions as we... Yes, ma'am. What's your name and where are you from? Okay, thank you, Emily. We haven't even talked about the products. Um, so my patents, my patents got approved for reversal of aging. I think I said that in the beginning. Skin, air, skin, hair, and nails, and cellularly in the body, and regeneration of the human body, and the land, air, and water. Because as Clayton shared, we actually um, have the same composition as our world, and we do share our DNA even with the leaf on a tree. We're all connected. So he's right. Avatar is a great example of showing how we're all connected. So the first three products uh, were called the Trinity, and it was Clean Slate, which cleans the inside of your body and helps. You can't anti-age or help your immune system or help your health unless you clean it out. Like we brush our teeth, we take baths, but I wanted something bioavailable for the body that would do that gradually and safely, and that's Clean Slate. Um, and people start with one drop in the morning, not dropper. I always say that one drop, one drop at night, and they go up to 10 in the morning, 10 at night. We've been able to help people all over the world. I started work on that product because I wanted to help with aging, but I also had um, traveled. I've said I've traveled to 89 countries. I've had more vaccinations than anyone I, I know, and I worked on those at the pharmaceutical company, and I needed stuff out of my body because I understand that there's a tipping point. Like people talk about autism and all these diseases, and the, the truth is it's our environment. But when you have too many heavy metals or toxins in your body, then you get an epigenetic that gets a disease. And so I really wanted to work at cleaning up people's bodies so they could live to be 130. That was my goal. Um, the second thing was called Restore, and uh, we named it that. I think I came up with that because I wanted to restore the cells to be healthy. So when you clean your body out with anti-aging, you have to restore the cells to natural things. So I've actually studied every religion. And I've traveled throughout the world, and turmeric, curcumin, black cumin seed, aloe vera, resveratrol are all in, historically, our different religions. And they've been able to help, just like silica was used to line the Aztec and Incas and to clean their water and their air. So I took stuff from history and from science and made Restore and Clean Slate. And then Zero In was the one that I worked on for sexual health. But my target was overall performance of the human body because as you age, you lose your sexual desire, you lose your desire to achieve, you become stagnant. And I wanted to give people back their youth, basically. And so that's how that was started. And then we have a long, now, like we just launched a product called Sculpt. 
Uh, there were so many people using Ozempic, and I'm not against pharmaceutical and biotech, but I wanted something naturally that would help people lose weight and gain muscle. So we launched Sculpt. We sold out in three hours. What kind of side effects does that have? No side effects. <laughs> it creates greatness. So we sold out in three hours. We launched. We, the three of us were in Germany on stage. We were out in three hours. So then we quadrupled the amount we ordered and um, sold out in three days. So now we are buying manufacturing, building manufacturing, because our biggest obstacle is we have such phenomenal products, and we have 13, I think, now that we've launched. We have such great products, like the Clean Spirits line that detoxes alcohol so you don't have to worry as much about weight gain and you don't have to worry about your organs as much. You know, that was a major product for us as well. We just keep selling out. So now we're throwing our lives into manufacturing and sourcing. We source from all over the world. Some of our ingredients, like our skincare line, is only from one place in the world outside of Korea. Um, and uh, two of our products are only found in two countries in the world. So it's really hard to obtain what we have. And I, again, I credit that to being very fortunate to work in 89 countries. Do you know what I mean? So we have a long line, and these two may want to answer more of those, but I think there's another question. We too. have, uh, I know, I have, are we good? Two more. Well, yeah, he's been waiting. Sorry, you got to ask a question earlier. So, yes, sir. Uh, salt and pepper. Uh, <laughs> salt and pepper. A lot. Wow. Yeah, yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you do you have infer women that have been infertile that actually how have ha healthy babies now? So one of the biggest ways we've grown, and you heard our growth rate. I mean, we had like a hundred customers, and now we have like two hundred fifty thousand customers a month. Um, sometimes more. I mean, it's just because of the weight loss product, but. We're not allowed to claim because we're nutraceutical, and I was in the pharmaceutical industry where we could do that. We can't here, but I will tell you this. We have case studies all over the world. We have doctors that discuss it all over the world because we've been able to help women with the Trinity, the first three products I discussed, along with another product called Immune Defense Shield, which has NAD and quercetin to help with the telomeres and mitochondria. Um, we've been able to help women all over the world that have miscarried repetitively or never been able to carry a pregnancy and they have gotten pregnant on our products. And if you ask me why, I, ne I say, you know, there's only one healer, and I believe that. It's something much higher than us, someone much higher than us. And uh, But giving your body, detoxing the body and cleaning it out, your heavy metals in the body and the toxins are one of the main reasons you don't get pregnant. So to be able to clean that out of the body, restore the body with the nutrients it needs and the vitamins, minerals, and everything it needs, the body just starts functioning. So we have lots of people with endometriosis, lots of people where the men were the reason they couldn't get pregnant, and after the, the husband and wife were on our products, they've been able to successfully um, have children. And this has happened all over the world. So it's one of our main reasons we've grown all over the world. So thank you so much to Lively and Grit Daily, and thank you guys for being a part of this. Dr. Christina Rahm and the Clayton Thomas. Ted Baker. The three of us worked together, but he just played the moderator. <laughs>